What's up guys, it's Brian again from Lake Hickory Scuba and Marina. Today's video is going to be based off a scuba board article that's titled, Please Dumb This Down For Me, PPO and ATA. And a lady Valia posted several questions about could we make it simpler for her to understand what PPO2 and ATA was and how it correlates or how it relates simply to nitrox diving. And so we're going to do our best to do that. When we look at PPO2, for example, we need to understand what each letter represents. It's simply the partial pressure of oxygen. Now, the way I see that is, or the easiest way for me to understand is, I think of PPO2 as simply an ingredient to a whole recipe, if you will. So let's look at a Coke bottle, for example. I understand that this is Coca-Cola, but I also understand there's many different ingredients that make up Coca-Cola, such as carbonated water, high fructose corn syrup, caramel color, phosphoric acid, natural flavors, and caffeine. And so if I take out one part, or let's say a partial pressure of one of these, I no longer have that Coca-Cola, I just have a simple ingredient. Well, if we took standard breathing gas, which is 21% oxygen, 79% nitrogen, then the partial pressure would simply be 21%. If we look at nitrox 32, then the partial pressure of oxygen in that nitrox 32 is simply 32%. So think of partial pressure as simply just an ingredient that makes up a whole. Jumping over here to ATA, or simply what I say is atmospheric absolute, that is simply the total amount of pressure exerted on an object. And we're going to say the object is us, the, the body of us as a diver. And the easiest way to look at this is to go back to our open water class and look at the atmospheric absolute chart that we saw during our open water class. Here at the surface, I'm under one atmosphere of pressure, okay? Every 33 feet of salt water, every 34 feet of fresh water, or if you like the metric system, every 10 meters you go down, you're going to increase your atmospheric pressure simply by one. And all we are doing is increasing the amount of weight that's pressing in on our body. So here at the surface, I have 14.7 pounds per square inch of weight squeezing in on my body. And it's the atmosphere that creates that, that weight. As, when I get to a depth of 33 feet, I've increased that atmospheric pressure by an additional 14.7. So I still have this 14.7 here. I have another 14.7 from that pressure, or that gauge pressure, if you will. That's going to give me a total of 29.4 PSI. So the ATA of 33 feet is simply 29.4 PSI, or pounds per square inch, which is two ATA, or two atmospheric pressures. So think of atmospheric pressure as the total amount of weight exerted on your body at any given depth. Now, calculating this is pretty simple. If we use the increments of, say, 33 feet or every 34 feet or every, say, 10 meters, but let's say that we're using an oddball depth such as, say, 27 feet or 58 feet or 72 feet. To calculate the, AT, or the ATA is very simple. You just simply take depth divide it by 33 or 34 or 10, depending on what increments you're using, and then add one to the total, and that will give you the ATA. So whatever your depth is, divided by whatever um, incrementation you're using, and then add the surface pressure back to it, or the surface atmosphere, that will give you a total pressure. Now, if you want to know more about this, check out our uh, video down in the description below on how we calculate absolute atmospheric pressure. I'll also link it up here for you, and just simply click on that and watch that video as well. But that's all ATA is, is simply the total amount of pressure exerted on your body. So let's, how do these two work together in, say, a nitrox diving situation? Well, let's take nitrox 32%. So I'm just going to simply write 0.32 up here because that's going to be the, the blend that we're going to be using. Anytime that we deal with atmospheric absolute and partial pressure of a given gas, we need to multiply it by whatever... Uh, atmosphere pressure we are at. So here at the surface, I'm breathing 32%, right? Well, if I go to a depth of 33 feet, then I'm going to have two times the amount of effect of that partial pressure. So at a depth of, say, 33 feet, it's the equivalent to breathing 64% nitrox up here at the surface, and so forth and so on. As we go down, I'm increasing the partial pressure. Now, the amount is not changing. It's still just whatever cubic footage of tank you're breathing, but the effect of it does increase. Here's an easier way to think about it. 
If I was to drink a beer, now I don't drink, so if I drank this beer, I'd probably be wasted. But if I drank a beer, theoretically, my body could handle it. If I had enough food on me, nothing really would happen. So the potency of one beer is really not all that much. If I add another beer to it, especially me because I don't drink, then I'm going to get a, a little tipsy. Now let's add a little bit more to it. And the more I add, then of course the more tipsy I get, the more drunk or intoxicated I become. The same thing applies with both nitrogen and oxygen. Now with nitrogen, we have to worry about what's called nitrogen narcosis. And if you want to check out our video on nitrogen narcosis, check it. it it'll also be down in the description below. Or simply click this link up here and you can check out our video on nitrogen narcosis. But with oxygen, we have what's called oxygen toxicity, or simply oxtox. And to, to really break down how much oxygen your body can withstand, we have an industry standard of 1.4 PPO2. Now that 1.4, I will say this, it's a very conservative number. And the reason we have to work with conservative numbers is because there's no exact. Each person's or each diver's physiology is a little bit different from the next. So we kind of got to have a, a median that works for everybody and 1.4 tends to be that medium. It's that point where, okay, if I say I drink one beer, I'm fine, but if I drink two beers, I'm going to be intoxicated. However, my friend can drink three or four before he becomes intoxicated. So we need an average number, if you will. And that 1.4 seems to be that average number where oxygen starts to become toxic. Now we also have a number of 1.6. Now in recreational standpoints or recreational terms, we want to think of 1.4 as the maximum. We do not want the partial pressure of oxygen to exceed that 1.4. And simply how do we do that? We use our ATA calculation, we times it by whatever our percentage of oxygen is, so whatever ATA you are, you times it by that, and you never want to exceed that 1.4. But let's say that we do exceed that 1.4, we made a mistake, we, we wasn't paying attention to our depth, we stayed too long or whatnot, we have a contingency here. And the contingency here is kind of a, a oops factor, if you will. I went too deep on this particular blend, and so I went beyond that 1.4 partial pressure of oxygen. Now what? Well, the 1.6 is, in, in recreational standpoints, is kind of a, a safety factor. Okay, you violated those rules, but it, it, it's okay. There is a contingency built in you're still going to be safe. Now in technical rounds, it's a little bit different than that, but in the recreational sense, think of 1.4 partial pressure of O2 is the absolute maximum effect. Think of it like this, it's the absolute amount that you can drink before you get drunk. And the 1.6 is a contingency, it's an oops factor. You never ever want to plan for that 1.6, but it's there just in case. So. I pretend like it's not there, so I never plan for it, but if, in the back of my head, if I do make a mistake, I have it to fall back on. That's the easiest way to think of it. So I hope this is a little bit easier for you to understand what PPO2 and what ATA is. PPO2 is simply the ingredient that makes up a whole. It's whatever percent of oxygen is put inside that cylinder to make up that total breathing gas, and the ATA is the total amount of pressure that's exerted on a body, and depending on the total amount of pressure, that will depend what the PPO2 is, and it will either increase or decrease that number as well, or simply the potency or effect level of that gas. So guys, I hope, or Lady Vilia, I hope that makes it easier for you to understand PPO2 and what ATA is. If you've got any questions, please respond to this video, put it down in the comment section below, or simply respond here on Scuba Board to us, and I'll try to make it easier if I can. If you need a, uh, say, a Skype session, I'll be happy to do a Skype session with you as well. But if you like the video, simply hit that like button for me. Do me another favor. If you got any friends that's taken a, a scuba course or even a science of diving course like the, uh, say, the SSI Science of Diving, and they're having a little bit of trouble understanding what PPO and ATA is, share this video with them, and hopefully it'll help them as well. But guys, I appreciate you watching this video. If you got any questions, put it down in the comment section below. Make sure to check out the other videos in, in the description below or those links I provided for you. As always, guys, make sure you follow us on Instagram and Twitter like us on Facebook, pin us on Pinterest, subscribe to us here on YouTube, and as always, guys, we appreciate your business.
Guys, we really appreciate you watching our videos. If you liked it, make sure to give us a big thumbs up. If you're not a subscriber, simply hit that subscriber button for us and make sure you hit the little bell to turn on all notifications. If you want to see some other cool videos, make sure to click these links here. They could be scuba tips, they could be diving videos, search and recovery videos, or gear reviews. Once again, guys, we really appreciate it.